Hello, I'm Blake McMillan, and I'm here with Dom McGrail, and we are going to be teaching you Scrum in 10 minutes. This is the challenge we thought up, and Don, I'm sure I've already used up 15 seconds, so let's get right to it. Yeah, 30 seconds a topic. So let's start with why Scrum. Scrum is not something for every situation. It is very specifically designed for when you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Nobody does. Not one brain, not, certainly not one document mm -hmm. can tell you what the, whatever it is you're building is going to look like. So Scrum allows you to try something, take what you know, build it, learn from it, do something different if you have to. So it's an empirical process. It uses an empirical process model to build uh, to navigate them to, to the right solution. Cool. I'm going to tell them about the Scrum values now. So the Scrum values, this is what we want for our team to use as the guide for how we behave. How like Who are we? These values, courage, focus, openness, respect, and commitment. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I do want to talk about commitment because here's the deal. As a team, we should commit to each other and we should commit to accomplishing the goals of the organization. There's somebody else that's concerned about the goals of the organization. Who is it, Don? That's yeah, the product owner. So All the right. product owner is part of the Scrum team. They're part of the Scrum team too. They are a team with the developers and the Scrum master. They're an accountability. Doesn't mean you need a title for product owner or a role. It's somebody on that team must take on the product owner accountabilities. Those accountabilities revolve around three things, three words, vision, value, validation. Vision, what's the direction? Are we going in the right direction? Value. Are we measuring success the same way our customers would? What is our definition of success? And validation, are we even building the right thing? How are we going to know? Um, those are the core things. The other thing they're accountable for is a list of stuff that has to get done. That's managing the product backlog. Yeah. All right. So the product backlog, this is the ordered list of all things known to be needed for the product. Now we say ordered because we want to make sure that it's understood. This is what's first and second and third and fourth. Now the product backlog, it should be a collection of hypotheses. We believe if we do this, it will be something valuable for a stakeholder, for a customer. And what we do is we use this as our way of understanding what's coming up next. So that's our product backlog, but we need something more than just a list of stuff, right? We need yeah, a getting a list of stuff done is not the goal. The goal should be the product goal. Yeah. So the product goal is the commitment to the product backlog is what how, how we call it. Because that's defined success as the goal. If we can achieve that goal, mm -hmm. uh, that's what's important. Not doing the 50 or so things in our product backlog. So in fact, you could argue if we did 25 of the things in our backlog and achieve the product goal, that's better for everybody. Right. So the goal is where the success is. That's how we measure value. That's right. And it's one of the much. things, <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that we want to do in uh, in Scrum is we want to make sure that we don't go too long working on the wrong thing. And so we've got this thing called the sprint, and the sprint is really just a big time box. And in that time box, we hold the other events. And the big thing that I want you to take away from the sprint is that it is a risk mitigation tool. So we're going to make sure we don't go too long without getting feedback from our customers and our stakeholders. It's going to be no longer than one month. Yep. And the, and the other way to look at the sprint is this is the developer's playground. This is where yeah. they yep. figure out how to create value. So they're going to create a plan and they're going to execute it during this sprint. Their goal is to produce at least something of value within that sprint. Mm -hmm. They are cross-functional, meaning they should have all the skills necessary to deliver something that's use usable and valuable. That's right. um, they are product developers is a good way of thinking of them, meaning they're not programmers or coders. Mm -hmm. They can, any role that it takes for your product, whether that's writing analysis and testing, mm -hmm. could be engineers, it could be hardware stuff, whatever is necessary. Those are, those are called developers in Scrum. And how that's do they right. plan? Yeah. And the way we start our sprints, sprint planning. Sprint planning for a one month sprint, no longer than eight hours. It'll be shorter for shorter sprints, of course. And in the sprint planning, what we're going to be focused on is why, what, and how. Why? That's going to come from the product. They're going to be sharing the product goal. They're going to share the product goal over and over and over until people are sick of hearing about it. But that's how we keep that focus. And we're going to focus on the what. What are we going to try to build? What are we trying to accomplish this sprint? And then how? The developers are going to figure out how they're going to do that. And there's going to be some outputs from sprint planning. Let's, let's talk about those next. Yeah, I mean, the output of sprint planning is a sprint plan or what we call in Scrum a sprint backlog. They, synonymous with the sprint plan. 
And that's the developer's plan. It's their plan. They choose how much off the backlog to do. They choose how it's going to do it, who's going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, that's the sprint backlog. They're like, you often will break down of the product backlog items. They can break it down any way they want. They could throw process stuff in there, technical debt things in there, mm -hmm. um, anything they want to do in there, uh, defects. But this is their plan, broken down to about things around a day or so, um, so they can see progress throughout the sprint. Beautiful. And we got to have a sprint goal, right? Our sprint goal. This is the why of our sprint. Now, one of the reasons that I see that teams struggle to create a sprint goal is because there's no cohesion of their product backlog, right? There's no cohesion. There's nothing that brings those things together. And that's what a sprint goal does. It helps us understand the why. What is the goal that we're trying to achieve for a customer, for our stakeholders? And that sprint goal, we're only going to have one. We're not going to have a bunch of sprint goals, but we need to have at least one and not none because that's like the worst thing ever. All right. So we've got that stuff. Sprint planning is done. Now what? Yeah, well, so they have this plan, but what are the odds that plan from sprint planning is the right plan? You know, there's no perfect plan, especially when things are, are complex. So built into Scrum is this activity called a daily Scrum. It isn't a status report. It isn't for anybody other than the developers. So they have a plan. They created the plan. Is that plan accurate? Do we need to make adjustments to the plan? Does anyone else need help? It's too easy to get so focused on your side of things and get caught up in the whirlwind that we rarely pause, take a breather, check in with our colleagues and go, hey, how are we doing? Is that plan still good? Yeah. If it is, back to work, two, three minute uh, conversation. If not, let's make, a, let's make an adjustment to that plan. Anyone need help? Who should we talk to? Who should we check with? That's the daily scrum. It's a, creating a plan for that day. That's right. No longer than 15 minutes, right? That's right. Um, all right. So what are we trying to build? Well, we're trying to get done work, right? We got all these ideas from the product backlog. When we get even one product backlog item done, well, that's the increment, right? And the, our hope is that we're going to produce an increment at least every sprint. Now, here's the cool part. We could pre be producing increments throughout the sprint. And then we have a final increment, which is all of them brought together. This increment, we want it to be high value and high quality. And so this is what we're after. This is the whole reason why Scrum exists. This is why Scrum is tolerated in organizations is because we produce done work. How do we know it's done? Yeah, well, there's a commitment that goes along with that increment, right? That's right. that's how do we know how far to take it? How do we know the increment is done? Well, that's defined by the definition of done, which yeah. is a great way to think about it as a checklist. Like most professionals, they have a checklist. Let's make sure all the things we agreed to are done. Do we have transparency in terms of what we're building uh, with our stakeholders, our customers, our team? Are we all seeing this increment the same way? Do we have the same level of quality in mind here? That's the definition of done. The moment any item off the product backlog meets this definition of done, an increment is born. And, and that's the key thing here. Nice. And then once we have an increment and we're, well, here's the deal. We could possibly not have an increment, but hopefully have an increment at the end of every sprint. And that's where we're going to review with our stakeholders. That's the sprint review. For a one month sprint, our sprint review is going to take no longer than four hours, but we're going to be having a collaborative working session with our stakeholders. We show them our done work. We get their feedback. That feedback is useful because it feeds our ideas of the future. Where are we going to hold those ideas of the future? in our product backlog, then once we're done talking with our stakeholders, then we're going to focus on us. Yep. And that focusing on us is called the retrospective. We don't need the stakeholders for this because the process is, is owned by the scrum team. Mm -hmm. So we just finished talking about the product and how to change the product in the sprint review, how Blake, what Blake was talking about. Stakeholders go away. Now let's focus on us. Let's focus on our process. That's is right. this the best process we can have? What changes do we have? We're having too many meetings, not enough meetings. Do we have the right roles? Do we have, like, what do we have to adjust? We can make this the process we want it to be. So, I mean, I argue all the time that this is the most important element of Scrum, the retrospective. Because if we do this right, everything else falls in line. We can only improve if we have the retrospective right. That's right. Continuous improvement. Now we've got someone that's focused on continuous improvement in Scrum and that's our Scrum Master. So our Scrum Master, their whole accountability is all about helping people understand how to get benefit out of Scrum. So with all this stuff that we've been talking about, you're like, gosh, this seems really different. This is where you need to get your Scrum Master involved, right? Our Scrum Master, what their, their whole thing is, is helping teams get better, helping teams get better at delivering value, helping them be more effective by understanding how to get the benefit out of Scrum. So we've got the Scrum Master Developers and Product Owner. Who's that? That's the Scrum team. That's right. And you know, if there's any prerequisite to doing Scrum, it's first, I mean, if you've got a problem you want to solve and you don't know how to solve it and you got people, 
the scrum team. Mm -hmm. So the scrum team is the developers, is the product owner and the scrum master together. One of them take on the product owner accountabilities. One takes on the scrum master yeah. accountabilities. And that's the prerequisite to scrum. That's the scrum team. There it is. Scrum. All right. Minutes. We did it, Don. 10 minutes. High Let's five. go. High five. Woo. <laughs>